I'm Math from Bradford Band Cascarade and this is our short film The Bradford Life. We're going to take a look at some of the places and speak to some of the people that we've been involved with throughout our musical journey here in our home city. Come on, let's go. Hi everyone, I'm here today just outside Bradford City Centre at Tri Mills on the corner of Preston Street and Fornham Road to tell you a little bit about the history of this place which has been the home of Cascarade for 10, 10 years. So in this little corner of Bradford here at Tri Mills, it's been a really important part of the Bradford music scene over the years. We've shared spaces with the likes of Scars on 45, White Light Parade, New York Alcoholic Anxiety Attack, and Terrorvision have recorded here over the years as well. Just across there at Thornton Road at the Mill, it's been the home of New Model Army and also a live music venue. So it's a real hub for the Bradford music scene. Your upbringing and where you're from often influences who you are and, and, and uh, definitely can inspire you to write about the things that you know. And I think that's what's, we, we, we cascarade, that's what we've done a lot over time is write about our experiences of growing up in Bradford, about the people that we've known uh, and about the places and obviously about uh, being in the inner city. And uh, you know, it's kind of like the grimy side of life, but it's real. Does that make sense? We're here outside the underground live music venue in Bradford City Centre. It's one of the few places in Bradford giving local musicians a platform to perform and it's a place where Cascarade launched their latest album. And I'm here today to talk to club owner and Bradford music supporter, Mr Nigel Boob. Come with me, let's go inside. Nigel, I want to ask you a couple of questions really about, um, about the club, about you, about Bradford. Um, First and foremost, what, what inspired you to open the underground here in Bradford? Um, basically, both my parents got cancer together. So I took some time out, gave me time to sort of reflect of what I'm doing with my life, what I want. Both of them passed away, and within a couple of days, I got asked to look after this building. Fell in love with it. It's been, yeah, it's been a journey, a very, a very, a very uh, let's say, difficult journey at times, but sometimes the bits the memories and the you know the atmosphere and the buzz has been just absolutely amazing i'm a, that type of a person that needs to have a somewhere a to project. get your teeth into <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it's a, it's a money pit but you know what sometimes it's life's not all about money it's about and bradford's got so much talent so many good technicians so many good musicians and, and I just want to be part of it i feel like you know if i can enable people to sort of enjoy what we've got in bradford then I've done my job. <laughs> and you, you were saying to me, Nigel, off camera, you, we, we, we were chatting about, about stuff and you're, you're, you're a space, you're a place where people can come and it, you want to do more than just host music. Um, you want to give back socially as well. Yeah, you know, the place is empty at oh, some time. Let's do other things, you know. Why not? Well, it's really inspirational because you were telling me that you're going to be working with um, different groups, people, you know, help support people with uh, different issues in life and things like that. Well, the project's going to be called the Rhythm Project. It's going to be based at the underground. And it will enable us to use music to help people in different needs, whether it be young people finding their way in life, people who have, have obviously uh, got a situation where, you know, they've taken the wrong road. Somebody said that the word I, I say so many times is community. <laughs> But I'm not afraid to say it because I think that's what we've got in Bradford. I think that I think that's one of the strengths that we've got. We've got a really good, diverse community, and I think that that's we need we need to shout about it, you know, because Bradford is a special place. Looking forward, I wanted to ask you in terms of uh, being a capital of culture, uh, maybe in four years' time, 2025. How do you think that'll have an impact? I, I'm really excited. I'm really excited. The people are already here. The community is already here. We just need to connect the dots. That's fantastic. Thanks very much for your time. Um, it's been good to come back down here. Obviously, Cascarade have played here a few times. We've had album launches here. Just a massive thanks for what you do for Bradford, giving musicians like us a platform to perform, to bring our people. We've had people from all over the country coming here to support us. So, you know, it is a real, also, makes a real difference. Without musicians like you guys, there won't be a place. So 
there's a journey between all of us. Yeah, it's all you know, interlinked. We all, we all need each other. This is life, mm. and uh, this is the Bradford life. I'm here at Mapper Arts and Cultural Centre in West Bowling to catch up with Jerry Crawford, a.k.a. Red Dread, a man who we have a lot of history with because 20 years ago as teenagers, this is the very first place and the first guy to ever record us. Involved in that recording was my old mate Nova, who went on to be part of Scars and 45, a Bradford band who had huge success in America, and I caught up with Nova via video link a couple of nights ago. So I've known you nearly 25 years now. Show me the age now. 25 years, <laughs> and we were 11 years old, and my, my overriding memory of, of first clapping eyes on you is you playing a piano. It's the only thing I were good at, Math. That, that I'm playing centre back for St. Bede's in every single year. My mum had one dream of hers. Right, one of her kids had to play piano. And obviously I came out of the womb first, so I got the I got the short straw. I used to go to church, I used to be on the altar with a with a candle, and I've just I've just finished playing the opening hymn. So I was the organist and the altar boy at the same time. It was like a two for one. Do you know what I mean? It was just the most surreal thing, but then it was like then I got asked to do funerals like playing funerals, and I used to get paid to do that, so I like, don't tell me teachers now, but I skived off school to do funerals, because I was getting 50 quid in hand. Sometimes I had three funerals a day, so from a 12-year-old, 13-year-old, it was a bit depressing. And then at one point, I remember, I got knocked around a few times through kids at school as well, and used to think, like, is it just a dream? Do you know, do you know what I mean? Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. Be able to do um, as a career and stuff. And, and do you know what? The amount of times I got knocked down, it put me further. I've seen you from when you did your first ever gig with a band. Do you remember this one at the Columba Club off Lum Lane next to the Sweet Centre, the old Columba Club, and you were reverb, the old school band, and uh, I that's beat, the one. And I that's beat. where it all started, wasn't it? Like band life. And it kind of made me think, these are my mates and they're up there on stage and they've got a crowd watching them. That's, I want that. But back then and stuff, we kind of just got on with it, didn't we? We did what we wanted to do. And I remember, especially like when you and I were in a band, even like even after when we joined different bands, people still were saying, like, what are you, like, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? But the fact is you persevered. It was difficult. Listen, it was difficult. It was difficult. And, and it was literally, it, it came down to an absolute shocking rehearsal we had. We were all over each other's faces. We were like, thought it was just like, we came home and it was literally just, a, it was a turn of a page. Management got, got in contact, we've got your song on, on CSI New York, a demo. You know what I mean? Demo, and that was it. We're like, right, cool, we could get a deal out of this. And we ended up, it was literally, not, that was it, that's when it was. Um, and it just shows, it just shows anything can happen, anything can happen. And, and, and luck is, yeah, luck is the key, perseverance is the key, the passion, the belief in yourself, what you do, not as an individual, but as a group. Does that make sense? And have that belief. Yeah. It's like, make sure you talk to someone and make sure you stick your hand out, shake their hand and stuff, because they'll remember you more rather than just a phone call or something like that. Go out and actually meet them. And, and to this day, we took that all the way through Scar's career. Typical Yorkshire lads and lass. And we always used to be the last person out of the venue. So you're meeting every single fan. Record labels, you always go every single meeting. You talk about stuff. Always remember where you're from. Be grounded. Do you know what I mean? Don't be Billy Big Balls. Pointless, right? Because it reflects. And I remember and be so humble and, 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 and reply to every email, reply, do you know what I mean? And be that, have that connection as much as possible. I think where I've been all over the place, but Bradford people are some of the most sorted, down to earth, kindest, most generous people with their time that I've ever met anywhere. You say you say how it is, don't you? We say how it is, we're very we're we're very honest, great communicators, I think. Um and we, we have got that bond as Bradfordians, as Yorkshire people as well. I think it's, it's a special place. Yes, it has had its bad raps. So it was everywhere. Everywhere's had the bad raps. We have got that kind of, um, we've always had that, um, like you say, we've had that kind of point of, oh, Bradford, you're from bloody Bradford, bloody hell. But do you know what? It's one of them things. So what? So yeah. what? Look up. Like, look at that. Look what it's been through through the years. Look at that history. Staring out upon a world, lost in time, lost in man. Free yourself from society. Get on up and be yourself. Life's too short to fade away. You can do it and make your name. Call me up later on. Now you're kicking down those walls. 
Jerry, um, about 20 years ago as a teenager, uh, I used to go to Schoolmore Youth Club and uh, we got somehow through our youth work, we got involved with yourself uh, because at that time you were running Mapper Studio and uh, we were teenagers and we just started playing music and we came here to record with you. Um, tell us a little bit about your involvement at Mapper and your history with the studio. Well, welcome back to Mapper. Like you said, it's been over 20 odd years. It's nice to see you've turned out to be a fine young man. But anyway, yes, uh, I remember that day and at the time I thought, yeah, man, you know, see what's going on there. Because it wasn't really my music, to be honest, but at the time I was kind of experimenting. I had some new equipment in, so I thought, you know, get some guys, test them down, guinea pigs and test them out. So I remember meeting you guys and for some reason I took it, it was like an instant liking, you know. Another engineer there called Mark, and he was saying, Jimmy, these guys are all right, you know. And as time went by, you kind of proved us right, you know, because you're still here. You know what, I've still got the cassette. Um, we were only like late teens, we just started playing music. I think Novaru was in the band at that time. He were an experienced musician on, on the piano and stuff. But the rest of us, we just started learning guitars and drums and bass and learning to sing. And when I li listen back to the recordings, obviously I think, whoa, they're awful. Because but back then we actually thought they were great and that's what probably, that's probably what kind of encouraged us to carry on and keep improving and, and going on to be, be a band and keep on being musicians. And obviously guys like you give us that platform. Um, I remember you used to record lots of other young people as well, like kind of, uh, I don't know if it were like urban music, MCing and R&B right, yeah. and stuff like that. Garage music, UK garage, R&B and so like you said, yeah. So for, for me, how it kind of started was, uh, and it was, uh, I remember I was working in a record shop and uh, I was in there just messing around and I heard some sounds some James Brown sounds, some samples, and I was thinking, what's all that going on? Anyway, I asked the shop attendant, what's all that about? He said, it's a sampler. At the time, I didn't even know what a sampler was, but I knew I had to get it. And that was my start of making music. And, and you were saying earlier, when we were chatting about this story, and you were saying Unit 3, uh, with your mate Delroy, they went on like to be on top of the pops. The and pops, yeah, signed to uh, 10 records. Uh, at the time, there was a DJ, still going now, it's called Sasha, big DJ got remixed by him as well. So yeah, they did really well. Guys who I knew, I thought, wow, if they can do it. And what about your history with Acid House in Bradford? Oh, right, okay, so uh, Acid House. So uh, I used to work in the record shop, Livestock Records. I don't know if you've heard of people like Up Here Ronson and Back To Basics and a lot of them like, well, at the time they were just up and coming. So they used to come to our shop with their flyers. But I, I kind of took a liking to uh, one of them called Upi Ronson. I kind of got on with them lot. And today, we're still friends. And through, through them guys, I've met, you name any top DJ, I've met them. And that's because of these guys. So, you know, it, it worked out all right. I also put on Bradford's very first house acid all-nighter. I got an opportunity where uh, I met a guy called Stuart Brown, a woman called Sharon Hayden, and a lady called Caro. They was running a, an organization called Community Arts. Anyway, again, to cut it short, Somebody were building a studio down there. It kind of uh, failed. I came in doing some voluntary work and it worked out where I set up this community recording studio and the kind of the rest is kind of history kind of thing. So like, what, what, what is it about music that brings people together? Like, so you, you were saying you did the first ever house, house night yeah. kind of in Bradford, club night and all that kind of, you'd, I'm assuming you'd have got people from all over the place. What, what is it about music culture that does that? But I remember my brother sent me a, a video <laughs> from London. This, I didn't even know what rave was, but he sent me this video and I was watching it and I just seen all these people, thousands of people, just having a good time. I had a few people on you, spoke to him about it and said, this is, this is what happens. You uh, buy a ticket, you don't know where you're going to go, you just wait until midnight, make a call, and then you find out where it was. We ended up in an air, aircraft hangar. Thousands of people. And, it, and then from there, it was just like, this is it for me, you know what I mean? Music had you. Yeah, because what it was as well, I could see how it brought people together. Because again, back in my days, you had, you know, you had your football supporters, Bradford Ointment. I kind of kept clear from them kind of people, you know what I mean? Yeah. But when Rave came out, <laughs> we were mates, man. Everyone together. We were just having a good time, man. And still, a lot of them guys, I'm friends with them today. So if you want for that music, I'd have probably never even spoken to any of these guys, you know what I mean? So on that 
department that it brought down barriers for us, you know? It's a, it's a universal thing. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sat here 20 years since first meeting you, and I was just a kid. And just, you know, like you said earlier, it wasn't really your style of music, having these kind of like, I don't know what we were like, I don't know, little scallies off the state mm -hmm. who were into a bit of indie music and their guitars and yeah. stuff. But still, you invested your time in us. And off the back of that, that gives you the confidence to, to go on. And yeah, and 20, 20 years later, you know, Cascarade, we, we've played all over the UK. We've supported some of our music heroes, shared a stage with guys whose music we were listening to grow up uh, from all these different rock bands and 90s bands, 80s bands or whatever. Um, and we, you know, recorded albums and EPs. Um, so I think, I think you're right, it's a, it's a powerful thing, isn't it? And yeah. it should be used more, do you know what I mean? Like in places like Bradford, for, for us guys, music is definitely a thing that I think going into the future, you know, after, this, after the pandemic and everything else, music culture is a, is a massive thing actually in terms of uh, getting people together and actually uh, building friendships, breaking down barriers. Definitely, yeah, because again, like I said, there's so much talent in Bradford that it needs to be, it needs to be out there we live in Bradford, we're multicultural. All cultures are entwining with each other, do you know what I mean? So that can only be a good thing. I agree. Thanks very much for chatting to me, Jerry. Good to catch up. Yes. And uh, we're looking forward to this feature. Peace out, baby. Peace out, man. Bradford, man, 2025. I'm here outside Bradford City Hall at Centenary Square and City Park, a place where we've played a few times with Cascarade in the past. And we're going to take a look at a building just over here, the former Bradford Odeon, soon to be Bradford Live, so let's go. Behind me is the iconic former Bradford Odeon, soon to be Bradford Live. We're hoping this will become the centre of Bradford's music culture and also be a catalyst and give a platform to the local music scene. We couldn't visit Bradford City Centre and come to the Odeon without taking a look inside and the very kind people at Bradford Live have allowed us in today and we're joined by Chris Morell, Director of Bradford Live and um, we're going to have a quick catch up today about, uh, about the future of Bradford Live and where we're at at the moment. Chris, thanks for having us. You're welcome, good to um, see you. It's absolutely amazing to be here and I didn't realise the scale of the building. It's vast. We're currently undertaking some enabling works, which you can hear in the background. Um, those enabling works will be concluded soon and we'll be starting the main contract works, which will take about 18 months with a view to opening the venue in autumn 2022. When the venue opens, uh, what, what are you hoping the venue will provide for the, for the, for the district? Over 200 events a year. There'll be There'll be big events, uh, rock, rock concerts in the auditorium. There'll be stand-up comedy, conferences, banquets, uh, smaller uh, concerts in the, in the ballroom. And uh, with this much activity predicted, 300,000 visitors every year to this venue, quarter of a million to the Alhambra next door. Uh, we're hoping that Bradford becomes a busier, more vibrant city than, than it is currently. And the, the history of this place, it's attracted in the past, it's attracted pop icons who have gone on to be literally world legends, living legends, mm. people like the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, Buddy Holly and the Crickets, Bill Ailey and Chuck Berry, and the list goes on and on and on. It's a big and list. Yeah, yep. It's a huge list of, of um, performing artists who have been here in the past, in the 50s and 60s. And um, looking into the future, do you think we're going to have... Uh, some artists here that that will be remembered again in, in 30, 40, 50 years time will have the artists of the of the future as well. I would think so. The, the NEC group are a, a tremendous organisation. They have good links with all of the, uh, the promoters in the music industry and, and we fully expect them to, to deliver top notch acts into into this this auditorium and, and it'll be a fabulous uh, stage for them. Uh, Smaller than the big arenas, bigger than the O2 venues. It's, it's the perfect size, it's the sweet spot for the industry and, and, and we think the atmosphere in here will be amazing once it's, uh, once it's full of people uh, enjoying themselves. I think if you, if you look at successful cities, cities with a music, uh, a successful music culture, there's, there's an ecosystem of venues and 
the young bands start off in the smaller venues and they move up and they have something to aspire to. And, and uh, the, the, the ambition of playing here would be something that uh, I, I would imagine many bands in the local area could be inspired by. And uh, th th that, that may be their goal. Of course, they may move on to, to Leeds Arena another day. And, and that's another part of this great ecosystem, which, which is important for, for the music industry so that the little guys, the new guys get a, have an audience and, and, a, and a full venue to play to. And similarly, medium size all the way up to the, to the, the, the big acts. And uh, this place fits, fits well in that ecosystem for West Yorkshire, I think. About 15 years ago, we wrote, we wrote a song with Cascarade called Quebec Street because obviously the Bradford Odeon, Bradford Live is, is built on Quebec Street, which is the little street that runs around the back that used to go around to the stage door area. And um, back then we were writing a song about a place that had all these memories and all this history. And we were kind of lamenting the fact that it was empty and it was just a, an empty shell and potentially was going to be demolished and lost forever. But being here today and seeing this and talking to Chris, for me, it's... I just want to say a huge thank you, you know, on behalf of the whole people of Bradford and, and, and the district as a whole, and, and, and thank you on behalf of musicians and people who, who are into that thing and into their heritage that you guys have worked so hard with Bradford Live and the Bradford Odeon Rescue Group and all these people yeah, yeah, yeah. throughout time um, have, have saved it and are going to actually uh, repurpose it into something that will be a, a world-class destination. There's a lot of people involved. It's not just us. Uh, and we've all got a lot of people to thank on that opening night, but uh, we're still we're still 18 months away from that. There's a lot of hard work between now and then, uh, but it, it's going to happen, and it will it will be it will make the difference for Bradford. Thank you very much, Chris. Big up Bradford, Bradford Live. Earlier on in the film, I mentioned about how coming from the inner city has influenced us as a band and has influenced our writing. But as much as coming from the city has influenced that, places like this have also influenced our music, the landscape around Bradford. You know, I'm here today at Penistone Hill, above Howarth, a place I've been coming to since I was a little kid. And uh, it's definitely a place that has influenced our music and influenced our thoughts and our writing, just as it has so many other writers. And if you take our song, Dust Yourself Down, from a second album, for example, out of the factories, into the streets, free from the city, he sees his release. It's all about coming out to places like this and getting away from the city and coming out and having some freedom in the hills. We hope we've given you a little taste of life in Bradford and about the music scene here in Bradford and about the people who we've worked with down the years with Cascarade. There's so many more people I could have chatted to throughout this documentary, but just didn't have the time. And there's so many more people involved in music and the arts across the district. I'm going to be over on Twitter, at Cascarade2010, talking more in depth about the people and the places featured in this film. And in the meantime, I'd just like to say a big thank you to the guys behind the camera doing all the hard work. Ian at P13 Digital Media, Richard at In The Scene Media and Gary at Rotograph. Thanks very much for joining us. I've been Math from Cascarade and you've been watching This Life, The Bradford Life.